Welcome back. It is Wednesday. I hope you're having a great hump day. Um, Derek Jackson joined me as usual on Wednesday. It is college football signing day, so we were uh, talking a lot about that. Um, Indiana having a particular good signing. Uh, this is, Derek, I think this is still, even though they lost Josh Hoover, is going to turn out to be, and you can't count these transfers, but I still think this is going to be one India and is top, if not their best class ever, which is kind of mind boggling. Yeah, I see it um, being unprecedented. Uh, but here's the thing at the end of the day, we have to turn these signing days into a winning record. We have to turn these uh, uh, guys that we signed. A lot of these, some of these guys, I think the coaches are going to have to take a chance on these players after they prove themselves. You're going to have to put some of these guys on the field. Uh, it's like I said, with you know, right now, in my opinion, with McCullough, we win. We with a good with a good spring up under his belt with McCullough, we will win with him. That's the guy that I need. And as I alluded to earlier, um, with, we've got to have protection around this guy. We've got to shore up the offensive line. Uh, we know that you know we would need another O line coach or whatever you want to do. I don't care what has to happen, but we've got to get some people, a supporting cast around this guy if we are going to take it to the next step and start winning football games. That's where we're going to compete when we win in the trenches. You got that right. Uh, defensive line, they've been adding a lot. Michigan State yes. adds uh, – there was a shooting down in Oxford, um, and they add one of the victims as an honorary player to their recruiting class. Uh, wow. Tate Meyer was a 2023 football player at Oxford High School and was one of four students who were shot and killed on November 30th. Um, in the video, Tucker says that Meyer had a passion to one day play at Michigan State and they recognized his her 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 heroism in that event, so uh, made him an honorary member. Uh, it's a tragic, that was a tragic deal there. But, so um, Yep, uh, Mel Tucker doing obviously doing a good job at Michigan State with the gigantic right. contract. Uh, lots of news. COVID is kind of coming back. Uh, the Browns coach, uh, Kevin Stefanski, he tests positive. Uh, was it uh, um, OBJ and he positive? Um, I, I think I saw that. You got Steph Curry passes the NBA's all time yeah. three point record, man. Yeah, almost he happened. Did he did it almost night. happened in Indianapolis, but yep. he went five right. for fifteen there. Right, couldn't get it done, but uh, he does it the next night instead in New York. In New York, of all places, kind of right, cool right. of where that should take place. But yep, he uh, did, man. did it early on in the game too. <clears throat> yep, seven minutes and thirty three seconds left in the first quarter. He didn't take long. Like I said, he was just nope. a couple short at Indiana. Drained right, right, 28 right. footer from the right wing. Um, so there you go. He is the three point king, but that's no shock. Right, uh, right. We've we been watching up, him yeah. knock goes down. We picked up a uh, an interesting recruit from a JUCO. Uh, I think his name is uh, Cameron Camper. Um, he's a, a at the wide receiver. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I think um, you know that's going to be. Very key uh, with Fry Fogel being gone uh, this year, uh, and then obviously last year <clears throat> uh, when we when the other receiver left, and then you know DJ Matthews getting hurt. So we're going to need somebody that's generally healthy. Again, when I talk about that supporting cast, we're going to need somebody out on the perimeter. And I think now Stephen Carr, Stephen Carr's done, right? He's done. This he was one and done here at Indiana. This was his final season, correct? Yeah, he's out of eligibility. Yeah, he's out of eligibility, but then we picked up the, the other back. Point was I think it's Point Dexter. I was surprised that he left. Is it Point Dexter? Is his name? Yeah, running back, uh, walk on running back. Yeah, I was a little yeah. surprised there as well. Um, the yeah. uh, the running backs okay. room has just cleared out, but uh, you've got Delon McCullough in there, so mm -hmm. he should be able to find the talent that he needs, especially the. Uh, I think that that's going to make getting transfers a lot easier out of the portal when you've got a guy like him. But I would also yeah. think the recruiting would be good uh, that you could bring him in. So we'll see 
uh, what he can do in his second year uh, as far as bringing right. in talent. Um, right. Indiana hasn't landed as far as landing uh, a running back. They haven't landed that guy here recently. You know what I mean? And, and, and kept him um, from, from the word go from freshman up. No, no. Uh, we did pick up Sean Silvers from Auburn, though. We picked him up in, in, uh, in the portal. I think Sean Silvers, uh, he was uh, pretty huge uh, down this way, and he's coming out of Auburn. He he come with some okay, okay credentials, uh, but we did pick him up, though. Uh, Jamari Sharp, a yep. defensive back, uh, mm -hmm. Miami, Florida, Indiana right. picked up. Uh, you've got DJ Moore from yep. Fort Wayne, uh, offensive guard. Fort Wayne is the offensive lineman producing city in this state. I, right, I right. think that Indiana probably has more offensive linemen from Fort Wayne than any other state in the country. Right. You're right. You're right about that. That's where they come from. Uh, that's exactly where they come from. And it's exciting to see things like that happen because I told you, and I, I've said it three times, that's going to be the key. I mean, we, we're picking up skill position players left and right, transfer port or JUCO, whatever you want to call it. Uh, and I'm very excited about, uh, you know, Travell Mullins coming in. But again, guys, we've got to win now. I don't care who we pick up, where we pick them up from, what what, they, what their credentials were, just like with the guy at Auburn. I mean, Sean Service come with great credentials. He's, he's a Florida guy. But listen, man, we need those numbers here at Indiana. We need it this season. And we need for that O-line to help get that kind of, you know, we, we need to stop getting in third and long situations and then running, you're running dive plays. I mean, who does that? You know what I'm saying? Or you, 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 you get your quarterback, you know, you, you get him out, you get a, I mean, you get a third string quarterback out of the pocket and you put pressure on him. You know what I'm saying? I mean, the guy's going to either throw a pick or he's going to fumble or something bad's going to happen. You know what I'm saying? You, you can't do that, guys. We, we just cannot do that. And win. <laughs> uh, yeah. One thing we have not talked about, I meant to do this with uh, Mitchell Page, Dad got it while we had him on, but the new the new offensive quarter, uh, coordinator, Walt, Walt Bell, Bell. Uh, mm -hmm. and his thoughts on him. Uh, uh, I, I've I've remained very uh, neutral, and that's very unlike me. Um, I'm one way or the other, uh, always. I, I just don't – I don't have a feel for Walt Bell. So there's no point in me saying something that would be just contrived. I I, I don't know. Um, I, I'm not going to hold his 2-23 and 23 record at can UConn against him. It stunk up there. And being a head coach sometimes is not for everybody. Um, but he has to win. He's got to – he has to develop these quarterbacks. These quarterbacks have not been developed, did, did not develop under the last two years. So you have to develop a quarterback and you have to develop an offense that works. Um, the tempo was too slow. Everything was just too slow uh, last year. And I, I think that that was a big part of the problem. But I, I think Indiana has it. Well, they have a chance to do, to do nothing but go up. That's another thing. Um, DJ, well, they, I, they, you, you only you only get to go up. Well, I tell you, um, supportive. I, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna say what I have to say about that. Supportive, but not impressed. Um, when you are numbers don't lie, you're two and twenty three. Yes, you're a head coach, um, but at some point, what when 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 things are not working, when do you start calling offensive plays if you're an offensive minded guy? And you still go with two and twenty-three. I mean, I, well, yeah, I, I don't mean, know. I'm, There's a lot of. Uh, I don't know. There could have been other scenarios there. I don't know. Um, but it is what it is. So he's the offensive coordinator, and I think he's yeah. had some success in other places. I, I very uh, done a good job with the passing games in some places. So uh, I think he'll be fine as an OC. But being fine and being great are two different things. You're not always going to get a Kalen DeBoer, obviously. Look at Kalen. He, he was here a short time. Boom, he's already off being a, a not being a successful head coach. He's already gotten one job and quickly moved on because he was successful there. And I think that that will continue to happen. Um, 
And congratulations to him. I'm going to be yeah. pulling for Washington. Well, yeah, me too. Hey, they, I mean, they, uh, they got Mike Pence Jr. up there. Great decision. But I'm going to tell you something. I'll say this and I'll say it again. This, guys, people that are listening, this is Big Ten football. Okay? I don't care how you size it up. You have to win in the trenches. I don't care if you're Walt Bill. I don't care if you're Jesus Christ. You got to win in the Big Ten, and you got to win now. <laughs> so that's, that's where it stands right there. It'll be curious to see how Michael Penix uh, does out in Washington because they have a couple of quarterbacks there, one of which I believe is the son of Br Brock Heward, uh, former Washington quarterback and yeah, yeah, yeah. ABC analyst. Uh, yeah. I thought I saw on there. So that's uh, – you got that going. So, uh, yeah, it, I think if anybody can do it, Kalen DeBoer can get that done. Mm-hmm. What's going to happen in the Big Ten? What who who changes in the Big Ten? Who this signing day? Who who comes out? Scott Frost and um, Nebraska. You know they they have to keep hitting things. Uh, well, what does Purdue get done? It's going to be interesting to see how the Big Ten as a whole comes out. Who does what? We know Ohio State is going to do well. Uh, they have the number one class in the Big Ten. Michigan mm -hmm. is going to be right behind them. P Penn State. Um, so interesting to see how this turns out tomorrow. Yeah, um, I think uh, <clears throat> the mentality and the attitude of an Ohio State and a Michigan, and it's much like or it's contradictory to what Coach Mallory taught us. That's why we were winning. These schools, they look past Indiana, Minnesota, ne Nebraska, uh, uh, Iowa, Purdue. They look past all these other schools. And in these kids' minds, here's what they, here's what they preach. They preach. Ohio State, when, when Jim Harbaugh goes in somebody's living room, they preach Ohio State. When Brian Day goes in somebody's living room, they preach Michigan. When Coach Mallory sat down in my living room, he started with number one opponent, and he finished up with Purdue. He talked about all ten. So he, he was saying, listen, I'll focus this game by game. They look past it in Indiana, and they look past it in Illinois, and they look past it in Nebraska, and that's where they're going to make their mistake in my opinion. 